All right. Hello, everybody. I'm going to give this a second for it to pop up on YouTube. Um, but I am here to talk about some of my reading so far in July. Here we go. I think we're, we're almost up. OK. Hi, how is everybody? Um, so this is a little bit different from the way that I would usually do a mid-month wrap up because we just got back yesterday from vacation. We were in Washington DC for nine days, which was really fun. We had a great time. Um, but what that means is that all of the content y'all have gotten has been was stuff that had been pre-recorded. So I didn't have a chance to do my typical mid-month wrap up, but I wanted to still do that in some form, talk about some of the books that I've been reading so far this month. Um, and the way that we are going to do this is I'm going to take kind of a page from my friend Mara from Books Like Woe's book, because the way she typically does her mid-month check-ins is she will talk about her hits, her surprises, and her disappointments, which um, I think for this month, for the live stream, that is what I'm going to be doing. And then I will talk about, because I, I don't really want to talk about all the books that I've read so far this month. Um, so I think that's that's the plan. I'm going to give it a few minutes. Hello. I hope everyone is doing well. Feel free to chat in the comments if you want. And I'm going to give it a couple minutes so people can kind of come on in. And then after the live stream is over, I will put all of the books I talk about in the video description in case you are looking for those. Okay, so I've done a fair bit of reading this month. Hey, Angela, how's it going? Um, good morning, good morning. Hope everybody is doing well. So we did have a great time on vacation as, as kind of a reminder for anybody to for, any, for anybody who is late to this, the reason this is different than my typical mid-month wrap-up is we just got back yesterday from nine days in Washington, DC. So I'm gonna do this a little different. Hey, Brianna. Hello, how is everybody doing? Hi. Yes, we did, we had a great time. Hey, Isabella. Um, so today we're gonna talk about my hits, my surprises, and my disappointments. Couple of uh, notes before I get going. One is a um, new podcast episode went up today at Chapter 3 Podcast, and actually Angela from Literature Science Alliance was one of the guests on that. Her and myself and Leanna from Leanna's Library talked about our favorite fantasy authors, what makes a favorite fantasy author, what makes a favorite fantasy book, so go check that out if you are interested. It is beautiful. It was very hot, but we had a good time. It was great. Um, and then one other thing because I haven't been very good about mentioning it this month, is for anybody who's been considering joining the Patreon that I run for the channel, um, there is a special deal going this month where any new continuing or upgrading patrons between now and the end of July will get a fancy special bookmark that I am designing. Um, It'll be bookish and fun, so I'm working on that. And then uh, new and upgrading patrons of at least a dollar or more will be featured in a secret video thing. So if you're interested, if that was something on your radar, FYI, that's going till the end of the month. Um, yeah. Hello. Good afternoon. UK. Yes, it was a fun. It was a fun conversation. Okay. With that said, let's go ahead and dive into the books. I'm going to start by talking about my disappointments so far this month. Um, one of which was a DNF. I had one, and it, it's been interesting to watch because my last video that went up was a conversation about DNFs and people have a lot to say about it, which is great. I'm so glad that people are, are finding that really interesting. Um, this was one that was a big disappointment for me because it was among my most anticipated books of the year. Other people have been enjoying it more than I have. So like, you know, take this with a grain of salt. But uh, I ended up DNFing Isn't It Romantic by Lissa K. Adams halfway through the book. Um, I kept, I kind of knew early on that it wasn't working very well for me and um, kept hoping it would pick up. And then I got to the halfway point and I was just like, this is not, I'm not enjoying myself, which is a bummer because I have really, really loved all of the other books in the series. But for whatever reason, this one wasn't working for me. The humor wasn't hitting. I wasn't really connecting with the characters. I don't I don't know what, I have a re reviews for all of these on Goodreads, but um, 
yeah, that was a bummer. So that was definitely a disappointment for me. Again, I'm seeing other people who seem to be liking it a lot more than me. Uh, but yeah, I, I ended up DNFing that one. So that was definitely a disappointment. Uh, another one that was a little bit of a disappointment, and I'm going to say for all of the rest of these, none of these were bad books, just, um, there was something about them that was disappointing, which is why I'm <laughs> putting them in this category. And then we'll move on to like some of my surprises and hits. I figure I always like to start on the, the less happy side and then move on to the more positive, but, um, Dial A for Aunties by Jesse Q. Sutanto. I had heard so many people raving about this book and how hilarious it was. And I will say, I really, really enjoyed it. This is not a bad book by any means. I gave it three stars. Um, and I can see why a lot of people have been loving it. I did think the early part of the book was very funny. I was laughing out loud. But I think for me, it got a little too madcap. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I can't quite buy this. It was like a little too out there for me. But I think if you enjoy that type of story, you might really like this one. Um, I think I was hoping to love it. And I didn't love it. I mean, I, I liked it. It was it was not it was fine. But um, I didn't love it as much as I was hoping to. So it was a little bit of a disappointment. Not bad, but a little disappointing. And um, this has been I've seen some people pitch this as a romance. It's not really a romance. It's kind of like a wacky comedy where like uh this woman goes on a date and accidentally ends up killing her date and calls her aunties to help her hide the body so like the premise is pretty wild i think for me it just got a little too wacky but there were some really fun things about this um so yeah but yeah, three stars that's that's kind of where i hit hey jocelyn yes vacation was great um okay another one that i'm putting on this and I actually really enjoyed it. I think I still gave it like four stars, but there's like a thing I'm noticing that is a theme <laughs> for me with this series. So I read An Offer from a Gentleman by Julia Quinn, part of the Bridgerton series. And the thing that I've, I've I found, this is the third book that I've read now, um, I always have the, ex the, the, the same feelings in every book. And I think part of this is the fact that they were published in the 2000s, but every single book I love the early part of it. I love the characters. I love the family dynamics. It makes me laugh. It's so cozy and I'm thoroughly enjoying myself. And then we get into the romance and at some point, one of the, the Bridgerton really always ends up doing something that kind of turns me off where they like push things too hard. There's like not full consent. It's not like non-consensual, but like gray consent or like i don't know just things where i'm like oh like this could have been one of my all-time favorite things if it wasn't for that and part of this again these came out in the early 2000s um you know they feel like a product of their time i do want to continue reading the series because i so much enjoy them but it's a little disappointing every time i do it because it's one of those ones where i'm like it was like it was this close to being like so good um I, but I love so many other things about it that I just, I'm, I'm probably going to keep reading them. So anyway, I don't, I don't know. It was, it, it was interesting. Oh, one thing I didn't know about this, it's a Cinderella retelling, which is fun. Did not know that going in. I enjoyed that element of it. Um, as an auntie, I want more auntie talk. I love it. Not, yeah. Hey, yes. Uh, yeah. That, that that seems to be an, a kind of an ongoing ongoing thing. I am with you. Newer romances are, are, I do prefer, I tend to prefer them for similar reasons because they do a better job of having more explicit consent than some of the older ones do. But like other things about those are so good. So I'm very conflicted about it. Okay, last book in my kind of disappointments category. I don't know that I would even call this a disappointment because I kind of knew going in that, that I was going to have these issues with this book because even fans of the series have issues with this book. Um, but I read The Gunslinger by Stephen King, which is the first book in the Dark Tower series. And okay, what was funny to me about this is this is a, a, a like an updated edition. And for this, Stephen King wrote a introduction to the new edition. And in his introduction... <laughs> He kind of rags on his own book and says, like, yeah, going back and rereading it, this was a young man's book with the, with the problems of a young man's book. And, like, 
there were there was way too many adverbs and like it was almost not readable so i'm i i was i i'm sorry just like keep going i promise like the series gets going in book two and i'm like man when the author is like ragging on their own book you know you're gonna be in for like a rough ride so um i you know i mean this wasn't terrible i like what did i give this i don't even know it was probably like a two and a half or three stars um i really liked the setup I, it's one of these ones where i do want to read the next book in the series because i can see the bones of something that i could really enjoy the world is really interesting it's kind of a multiverse deal um but parts of it are definitely rough in terms of pacing and writing uh, the other thing about this is like oh my god the the over sexualization of every single female character that ever comes on page is a lot uh so you know like it, it's one of these ones where i kind of knew going in it wasn't going to be a perfect book i'm intrigued enough that i do want to continue on and read the book too and see how i do with that um but kind of a rough start to the series so those are those are my like my more kind of disappointing reads so far moving on let's talk about some of my surprises um i had quite a few of them so the first one Oh, okay, hold on. Fair enough. Yeah, I want to read it. I'm really good. I, I did it as a buddy read with with Leanna. So I at least want to read book two and see how I do. I wish I have bought. I recently picked up book two. So I'm going to at least try that and we'll see. See how we get on. Um, okay, so surprises. The first one is a book that I actually did in a reading vlog. Um, where I had small booktubers pick my TBR for me. I have to say they did a fantastic job picking books for me. Really great job. The first one that was a surprise that I don't know when I would have picked up and didn't expect to love as much as I did was Transcendent Kingdom by Yaa Jesse, which I don't own a copy of, although I do want to try to get my hands on a copy of it. This is more literary fiction, which I rarely read just because it's so hit and miss for me. But I loved it. I ended up giving this one six stars. It's one of my, which means it's going to be one of my favorite books that I've read this year. The writing was beautiful. The character work was incredible. And I really related to a lot of the way that it was dealing with issues of like religion and science and having and like coming out of a fundamentalist Christian background. It addresses a lot of that. It was just a really fantastic book. If you want to hear more of my thoughts on it, check out that reading blog because um, I get more into it there, but really, really good. And that was definitely a surprise for me. I wasn't expecting to enjoy it as much as I did. So um, I am okay with this, with authors updating books, especially if they've been out for a while. I mean, I don't, I don't have strong feelings about it. I know some people do. I don't, I don't, I don't have strong feelings about it. I think it's fine, but um, okay. Next surprise for me was this book, Imposter Syndrome by Kathy Wang. This was interesting. It wasn't really what I was expecting, but I ended up liking it. It was a, it was the sort of book that really grew on me where I wasn't sure for a lot of the book how I felt about it. And then by the end, I was really into it. I, I was very invested in the character journeys and I thought the ending was so good. I really liked the ending of this. Um, this has been pitched as kind of a thriller and it's not like it's super super character driven okay so it's there's not really that many shocking twists and turns or anything but it's really got really good character work and it's dealing with corporate espionage uh where there's one of it's got two perspective characters and one of them is an agent from russia who's undercover at the head of a corporation in Silicon Valley. So it's got a lot of stuff about women in the tech field, which is interesting. Um, the other perspective character is a Chinese American woman also working in the field. So yeah, this was an interesting one where like for a lot of the book, I was like, ah, I don't know how into this I am, like maybe a three star read, but it's kind of interesting. And then by the end, I was really invested in these characters and I think I ended up giving it like four stars. So um, kind of a surprise where I, it, it ended up being pretty good. It was, it was an interesting one. So yeah. Okay. Similar with Black Buck. Okay, that's one that's on my TBR. I do want to read that one at some point. So good to know. 
Okay, let's see my list. Right. My next surprise was this, which I guess this is sort of spoiler. I'm reading this for a vlog that will be coming. Um, so I'm not going to say too much about it here, but like preview of things to come. This is a, da uh, a Dash of Trouble, the first book in the Love Sugar Magic series by Anna Mariano. And it's a middle grade fantasy story about a young, I think Mexican girl who comes from a family of witches and they have this as a secret from her and she really wants to be a part of it. She feels left out. She's the youngest in a family of sisters and uh, kind of gets herself into some trouble dabbling in magic. She doesn't know how to use properly. It's very cute, very charming. Um, yes, really enjoyed it. Yes, <laughs> Jocelyn, I know you, you have like pushed me to pick this up. Um, I know you really loved it. It was really fun. Yes, Isabella, you were with me when I bought, I bought the, that's right, we were book shopping together. That was fun. Yes. It is coming, so uh, keep an eye out. Hopefully Saturday, maybe, we'll see. I, I'm still, the vlog is still in progress, but we're working on that. So that was a surprise that I really enjoyed. Uh, the next one is one that I don't have physically. I listened to an audio review copy from the Volumes app. And this is one that, you know, I've recently in the last several months started doing a podcast and just kind of jumped into it. My background obviously was doing the YouTube thing and I didn't know that much about podcasting to start, but I saw there was this um, audiobook, NPR's Podcast Startup Guide, and it was fantastic. I finished it while I was on vacation, started it before, and it was just really, really helpful and practical and useful. Um, so if you are a podcaster or are thinking of starting a podcast, I would definitely recommend checking it out. And the audiobook was great because they were able to um, orally, uh, orally, I guess is the word, <laughs> um, show some examples of some of the things that we're talking about in terms of issues that you might have with the audio on a podcast, breathing exercises, just a lot of like tips and tricks. And then also I thought they did a really good job of making it accessible for both small podcasters who are like don't have a lot big budget, as well as corporations who maybe want to start a podcast. They kind of offer like uh, like an array an array of like here are the things you take into consideration. Where do you have more time? Where do you have more money to invest in these different pieces of it? Um, and recognize like you know, it doesn't all have to be perfect, but I really liked that. So if that's something of interest to any of you in terms of podcasting, I would recommend it as a really practical guide. I kind of want to get myself a physical copy actually to look back on it. Um, so hopefully that will be helpful in kind of growing that. Hi, Michelle. Good to see you. I'm here. Uh, so yeah, that was a surprise. I didn't have a lot of expectations going in. It ended up being really great and useful and interesting and kind of got my wheels turning on some stuff with the podcasting. Okay, two more surprises and then we'll get into my hits. This is going very well. And it's nice because I don't have to edit it because I have like a lot of other things I need to catch up on. Um, so I read Arsenic and Adobo by Mia P. Manansala. Uh, this month I have gotten through a ton of my Book of the Month Club picks, which is very exciting. I think I've read like five of them, which is nice because they were kind of piling up. So I'm trying to like get through them. Uh, I listened to this one on audio from my library and I really enjoyed it. It's very charming. I didn't really know what to expect because I'm not a big cozy mystery reader. And this is the first book in a new cozy mystery series surrounding a Filipino restaurant in a small town. And it was really charming. I really enjoyed it. Was it perfect? No, I think I gave it like a four star, but I had a good time with it. I enjoyed the characters, the food descriptions sound great. Um, and you know, like this is definitely in the cozy mystery genre. I was kind of like peeking over um, some reviews on Goodreads of this and some people were sort of horrified at how like casual <laughs> the characters were being about the, like the murderers and the deaths. And I'm like, yeah, that's the cozy mystery genre. <laughs> like that's kind of what it is like, oh no, someone died. Now we're going to go make some cookies. Like, I mean, that's the, I feel like that's kind of what it is. It like doesn't take itself too seriously, which I think is nice for people who want uh, like a murder mystery that doesn't get super dark. So um, yeah, anyway, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. I would definitely read more from this author and it was, it was a pleasant surprise. Yes. 
Yes, Michelle, we had a great vacation. It was fun. Um, yeah, I, so I would recommend it. I think it's, I think it's fun. I thought it was, I thought it was cute. Hello. This sounds great, Lydia. Yeah, uh, Tristan Strong is, is really good. I really, really enjoyed that. Awesome. All right. Last surprise before we move into my hits. Uh, loved arson. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I thought, I thought it was, it was a fun one. Oh, uh, so I don't know. The person who dies has diabetes. He's young and I don't know much about it. It like, I, I can't talk that much about it without spoiling things, but the, the person who dies has diabetes. I don't know enough to tell you what the rep is like, but he's, yeah. I don't know if that helps. Feel free to like message me later if you want like specific, if you have like specific questions that I can answer. I just don't want to get into spoilers on it. Okay, last surprise was The Girl with Stars in Her Eyes by Zio Axelrod, another book of the month club pick. Um, so this is a debut contemporary romance that's very plot heavy. Uh, it's kind of a second chance romance, like these two people who had been childhood best friends and kind of secretly had crushes on each other, reconnecting later in life, and they're both musicians. Um, I am not usually one to pick up a romance about music or musicians or like famous rock stars. Like that's not usually something that super appeals to me. It's just like not that interesting. And so the reason I would say this was a surprise is it, I really enjoyed it quite a lot. I thought the character work was really good. The way that the characters were written kind of sucked me into the story and got me invested in their relationship and in the different things that were happening um, around them. And yeah, I just thought this was a really strong debut. Again, it was a four star read for me. Really good and really enjoyable. Uh, I would be interested in reading more from this author. So I know the author herself is a musician and has family members who have been kind of big in the music world. And I think you can tell from the way it's written, it definitely reads like somebody who knows what they're talking about in terms of that. The main character um, ends up involved in a girl rock band. And so it deals somewhat with issues of uh, like sexism in the music industry, which I think is interesting. But yeah, I liked it. I thought it was, it was good. It was like a pleasant surprise because it's the type of subgenre of contemporary romance that usually doesn't interest me that much. And I just thought this was a really good, good version of it. So yeah. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Hope you enjoy it. All right. With that said, I think we can move on to my hits for the month so far. Um, the first one, it's like some of them I have physically, so I have them like written down so I know which ones to talk about. So the first one is this. I really, really loved this. This is called Where the Rhythm Takes You by Sarah Das. It is a debut YA contemporary romance that is a retelling of Persuasion by Jane Austen set in uh, Tobago. And the author is from Tobago. I loved it. It was so good and so charming. She did a fantastic job of retelling persuasion in a way that really made sense for the modern day. Uh, it's about to, I mean, I mean, if you know, the, if you know the plot of persuasion, you're going to see the plot beats that you're expecting. If you don't, then this is following two, te you could, I think you would still read it and enjoy it. It's about two teenagers, older, older teens. I would say it's like slightly on the older end, but, um, they had dated when they were young, and then one of them went off to find fame and fortune as a musician in the United States, and the other one stayed to help manage uh, her family's hotel because her mom was getting sick. And then they kind of reconnect and have to deal with like baggage from the past. This was, it was great. It was really charming. It made me want to go visit Trinidad and Tobago, <laughs> like the way it talks about the food and the culture and the, the islands was really cool. It was a really strong debut. I loved it. I thought it was very good. The author did reach out to me to see if I'd be interested in reviewing it. So I had this sent to me for a review and I loved it. It was great. I, I am a big fan of Jane Austen. 
So anytime you get it, but, but it's gotta be like a good retelling. You know, I don't love every retelling of Jane Austen. I feel like often they're disappointing and persuasion is tricky in particular, but I thought this was very clever. I don't want to spoil it, but like clever in the way that it, um, like retold some of the things that happen in that story. So if you're a Jane Austen fan, I would definitely recommend, or if you just want like a cute YA kind of frothy romance, it's a good one. So that was a definitely a hit. Uh, another hit was another one that I read for that um, small booktubers pick my T. Actually, two of my other hits are from the small booktubers pick my T. Pick my TBR vlog. They did a great job. But uh, such a fun age by Kylie Reed, which I had an audio copy of, and I ended up after re listening to it, bought myself a physical copy because it was on sale. So really, really good. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of good books out there. Um, but yeah, I absolutely loved this. I had been putting it off and I'd heard a lot of good things about it and it ended up just being so, so fantastic. And one of the more intense grab attention grabbing opening scenes I've read. I think the other book that comes to mind that does something like this and kind of starts off with a bang is Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. That one is fantasy, but it's another one where it's got this opening scene that's just like, oh my God, like what are we in for? And just like starts, hits the ground running. This book is very similar. And that opening scene is following one of our two perspective characters who is a young black woman who works as a nanny for a white family. And last minute she is called at night to take the child because of an emergency situation to a local grocery store late at night to get her out of the house um while her parents are taking care of some stuff and uh a kind of karen i guess like a white white lady who is concerned about this black woman with this young white child worried that she like kidnapped her or something late at night talks to the security guard at the grocery store and it turns into this whole huge confrontation and the whole thing is really horrifying. And that's kind of what opens this book. And it leads to dealing with the nanny's perspective and the other main perspective is the mother, the white mother. And <laughs> this book is wild, y'all. Like it, it's so, so good. The writing is incredible. The characterization in this book is amazing and it's really thought provoking and deals a lot with uh, race relations and microaggressions and just a lot of things. So if you haven't picked it up, I would highly recommend it. I wish I hadn't put it off so long, but I'm really glad that this pushed me to finally read it because it was, it, it was a ride. Yeah, really, really good. Uh, perfect timing. <laughs> finally, there you go. The universe telling you, you should read it. It's, uh, it's very good. Okay, uh, my other hit from that vlog was The Killing Moon by N.K. Jemisin. I mean, of course it was a hit. Anything by N.K. Jemisin is a hit. She's one of my favorite authors. I think, I think arguably the most brilliant sci-fi fantasy author currently writing. Just saying. Uh, this was the first book she ever wrote, not the first book she ever published, but the first book she ever wrote, and it's still fantastic. It has dream magic in it. It's set in this place where, uh, yeah, there's like, there's dream magic and people can be killed in their dreams and then their blood collected for like magical uses by these people. There's lots of like political things going on here. It's very interesting. Very, very good. Uh, I, I always love anything by her. I do think uh, what's what's interesting is reading some of her earlier work versus after her later work is I think the character arcs, the character development in this, while it's still very good, is not quite as good as her later work. So you can definitely see her growth in characterization and character development, but it's still very good. Like for a typical author, this would be fantastic. It's just that, you know, she's amazing. So this was great. I loved it. Yes. Yes, Angela is a fellow N.K. Jemison stan. <laughs> like, it's, she's she's amazing. Absolutely. Yay! Yeah. Um, I know. I'm like, I'm I'm pacing myself on her backlist because I'm gonna be so sad when I run out. I I just have loved everything I've read from her. So that was definitely a hit. And okay, two more books to talk about for 
this. Uh, next hit is the Patreon book club pick. We're going to be talking about it on Sunday, which like, it's going to be a very interesting conversation. It's been kind of fun to see everybody like chatting in the discord about it. Um, but we read the good sister by Sally Hepworth, which is kind of a domestic thriller about two sisters, one who maybe has a dark side and, uh, one of the perspective characters it's not like specified, but I think she's probably somewhere on the autism spectrum, has some kind of a processing disorder. And I love her so much. Like one of my favorite characters I've read recently, she's wonderful and the way she was portrayed was really good. This was not a book that was necessarily surprising in what happened at the end, but the way that you get there and the way that the characters were written was very interesting. Um, so I'm excited to discuss that one more, uh, but I would, I would recommend it if it's been kind of on your, on your radar. I think this is for the Killing Moon. Yes, Killing Moon is great. <clears throat> and then the last one that I want to talk about, such a hit, and I'm so, so pleased. It's coming out next month, early next month, I think. Um, but If the Shoe Fits by Julie Murphy. Okay, if you guys have seen, if you haven't seen it yet, I, I last year One to Watch came out, and I was not a fan of one to watch. Uh, I have like a very lengthy ranty video reviewing it. And um, I was disappointed by it because I was like, look, you said you were going to give me like good fat rep and the bachelor and like a confident heroine on reality TV and a good romance. And like, I was not pleased with the way that it was done. So if you feel similarly, might I recommend you try if the shoe fits because it was so good. And it gave me all of the things that I was wanting and did not get from one to watch. Um, really, really enjoyed it. I thought the fat representation was really good. Um, this was Julie Murphy's first adult novel. If you're looking for a steamy romance, you're not gonna get it. Like it's really, there. it's like closed door steamy scenes, but it's also interesting. It's Disney's first foray into writing adult romance or publishing adult romance. And I think it's really good. I'm excited to see what else comes out in this line. It's a very loose retelling of Cinderella. Uh, but it's so good. It's really cool. I like the way that they did it. It's also a, uh, a fat woman going on a reality dating show kind of akin to The Bachelor. So she is one of the women um, in this. It's great. I was a fan. I thought it was fantastic. Um, I, I maybe wanted a little bit more from the romance. I still liked it. I think the romance is really good. I But because it's all from her perspective, Cindy, you know, My, my computer lost connection. Can you all hear me? Tell me. Sorry, my, uh, my, it lost connection to ear pods, but I think, I think we're back. <laughs> um, okay. I will wait for the comments. Let me know and look at these. Let me know if, if you can hear me in the comments. Yes, it's back. Perfect. Uh, okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. I think for whatever reason it lost Lost Bluetooth connection, who knows? Uh, okay, so anyway, it was fantastic. Definitely recommend checking out If the Shoe Fits if that is what you're looking for. Like I said, I do prefer a romance that's dual POV because I like to have the hero's perspective in the romance and we didn't get that. So I, I feel like I would have liked it better if we'd gotten a little bit of his perspective. But that said, really, really good. I am super excited to see what they do in the future. I also really liked the fact that it's a modern Cinderella retelling that steers clear of this thing of having like an evil stepmother and stepsisters. Instead, what they did is they just have kind of a complicated but affectionate relationship where like they don't always know how to relate to each other very well, but they care about each other, which I liked a lot better, especially for a modern day retelling of it. Um, so yeah, really good. Definitely recommend Yay! Yes, I is is Izzy. It's really it's really fun. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, that was definitely a hit. I'm really pleased. I might have to order it and have it on my shelves. And the cover is great. And I I love seeing. So I think correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's the first in what is going to be a series of 
fairy tale retellings as adult romances with fat characters, which is great. Like I, I love that they're doing that if that is accurate. Either way, it was it was a lot of fun. I thought they did a really good job. So yeah, um, this is a good question. I think it depends on what you're into. I started with the Broken Earth trilogy and I don't regret it. But if you want something that's more classic fantasy, you could try 100,000 Kingdoms, which was her first published book. If you like a bit of a more sci-fi fantasy feel, you could try The Killing Moon. I mean, any of her books are great. They're all just very, very different but all good. So yeah. Yes, it is really good. I'm so pleased. <laughs> um, so yeah, those are, those are most of the books that I've read so far this month. I didn't talk about everything, but a lot of it. And uh, since we're so late into the month, I thought this would be an easier way instead of, you know, trying to film an entire mid month wrap up. And then I'll talk about everything at the, at the end of the month, you'll get my usual, usual wrap up. Ooh, Farrah Rashona is doing Tiana. What? Oh, I'm so excited. That's really exciting. I'm excited to see what they do with the series because if this is any indication, I think it's going to be a really good series. Yay. That's good. That's good to hear. Um, so yeah, that's, that, that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about. Those are the things that I've been reading. I hope you all are doing good. Thank you for joining me. This has been been fun and I'm glad that this worked out. 36 minutes. Okay, so we're like, this is probably about what it would have ended up being if I'd done an edited video anyway. So that's great. And yeah, um, I will be working this week on getting some more content together for everybody. Um, and all, all of the things I had pre-filmed went up while I was on vacation. <laughs> So I don't have anything yet, but I have plans. So uh, more things will be coming. Yes, Broken Earth Trilogy is great. And actually, Michelle, if you want to join, I'm going to be doing a read-along of the Broken Earth Trilogy starting in September because I want to reread it. So, hey, just saying. Yay. Thank you all for joining. I hope you have a great rest of your Tuesday, and we'll see you later. Bye.